Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a collective reading. Um, I'm using my traditional tarot deck, so the cards that you'll see are from this deck, just to keep it simple. Um, that's the reason why I chose this deck instead of the um, big combined deck that I usually use for the collective readings. But really, the inspiration for this reading came from something that happened yesterday actually and it made me reflect a lot about like the obstacles that we place upon ourselves or that are so embedded within our soul are so intrinsic to our way of being or the way that we have learned how to be or how to fit into a specific role a specific society a specific family um, and how that create, how that creates like blocks or how that creates, um, some sort of, um, impediment or, um, like a roadblock that feels like it's really hard to, um, permeate or how to, win over how to surpass that how to overcome that it's like that's the big question so yesterday when i was um just strolling down the street i saw this girl with a t-shirt and it said your only limit is you and that felt very personal that felt like it was exactly the thought that was going through my mind and there it was like you know just stamped on the girl's t-shirt um and of course these signs they're not for nothing right um so i took that to heart like i just took that into my meditation and it made me just reflect and ponder about those things that are creating such resistance or such block that sometimes we feel like it's impossible to break through that. And so I did pull some cards yesterday for myself. And it's interesting because the two cards that are here beginning this reading were cards that were yesterday um, in my own spread. And so it's fascinating because today, even though they are Kind of like this um not a reminiscent uh reminiscence of yesterday's message for myself but it's almost like a reminder of yes what came yesterday for you is meant to be shared is meant to be um it's meant to touch other people's hearts right the same way that i took that message to my heart so the two cards that came yesterday for myself but in another order with other cards um, around them but that are here opening this reading is the two of swords and the eight of pentacles so the two of swords is talking about that traditional meaning of having this blindfold that is preventing you from seeing something that is right in front of your eyes right and it has to do with the sacred path it's like this purpose this sacred work is being laid in front of you, but there is something that is blocking you from seeing that. So what seems to be the veil or what seems to be the blindfold is the fact that your work is changing. Your sacred purpose is, it's almost like I'm seeing this as like tiles that are being um, renovated or that are, um, it's like redesigned, remodeled. Right, so the path that perhaps you had a clue of what it was, it's actually being redesigned or it's being renovated somehow. So the sacred purpose is under construction or is um it's like it's um it's like it's just being remodeled because it's like there is somewhat like um it's like this unknown factor of what what it going what it's going to look like what is going to be what is it going to feel like when you're walking down that path right so there is this shift that is happening that is not 
being seen. It's not being perceived yet. And the fact that there's something that is not being seen in regards to a shift in a sacred purpose, in a sacred path, it has to do with the fact that what is being let go or what is being um, put to sleep, maybe quite literally, right? Put to bed or, you know, being um, buried, but in a very honorable way because we have the nine of wands and the moon. The moon here is talking about some sort of ritual performed under the moonlight. And, you know, we are um, in Halloween yesterday. Um, tomorrow is going to be um, the new moon in Scorpio. And yes, there is a moment of celebration of the moon, right? It's almost like casting a spell under the moonlight. But what is going to go is the nine of wands. So what this is talking about is that this was the expected path, right? There is this renewal. There is this um, remodeling, redesign that is happening in your sacred purpose or to your sacred purpose that you cannot perceive so much further down the line, right? Because it's being, it's like it's shifting. It's not guaranteed. But what is guaranteed is that something is being put to sleep, right? The moon here is almost like there needs to be like this lulling to let go of the expectation of what this path could be because the expectation would only bring almost like the, the old ways, right? It's like the old... Um, the old sidelines, the old guidelines, right? I'm seeing these as like a the curve, right? It's like um, it's like the same path, basically. It's like you you don't want to keep feeding this. So maybe if you're not aware of what is going to look like down the line, that's okay. But just put to sleep your expectations. Right? Because that is what is supposed to be buried in a sense. It's almost like, because sometimes I see the Nine of Wands as this um, muddied field, right? So it's like it's, it's like this uh, barren landscape or this very, um, you know what's coming to mind right now? It's like uh, this mentality of scarcity because it, uh, the word that I was uh, going to say was like this poor landscape. But it's not really that, right? If you've seen, you know, my readings, you know that the Nine of Wands to me represents the beauty that is seen or perceived even before the first flower or the the first lotus flower blooms, right, from the mud. So it's almost like having this um, this hope that is different from the expectation. It's like. Don't expect it to be hard or challenging or, you know, a mess and don't expect it to bloom. It's like nothing is guaranteed. That's for sure. Because while you're doing this spell under the moonlight or this ritual under the moonlight, that's when another character, a new teacher, I want to say, enters the scene with the Hierophant. So the thing about the Hierophant here is that, first of all, it looks to me like a sail, but a sail that is coming from behind the fog or, you know, kind of like this very dark space that is only lit by the moonlight. So the moon, the moonlight, you know, the moon doesn't have like light on its own. It needs the light to bounce off that, right? So the moon itself is kind of like the reflector is the mirror. The teacher here is the same thing, but you see here how there is like this sail that what or used to be the thing that was bouncing the teachings off of, if that makes sense. But you see here how there is another one coming from the shadows, coming from behind. That is the new teacher. That is the new entity is what I'm hearing that was blocked, right? The block, the blindfold. So it's almost like 
the sale here, you know, if we're talking about like this path that is being remade, right? The expectations are being let go, you know, and it's interesting because, you know, we're ending here with the justice, which is talking about like letting go of the bad expectations and the good expectations, like let go of any expectations because the teaching now is different. It's like the moon is casting some sort of spell, right? It's like teaching about how, it's like, what is the surface now that is going to serve as the mirror? What is going to um, reflect back this teaching, this new teaching? Because it's almost like the old teacher is now, you know, the same way that I'm seeing the blindfold coming off. And what you're seeing is this remaking of the path. This is the way that I'm seeing this sale. So it's almost like this sale is no longer needed or it's out of proportion is how it seems like because it feels like it's too big. And for whatever reason, this next step, you know, and the fact that the sun is coming after, right? So it's almost like we were all, collectively speaking, we were all used to navigating in the darkness, but now we're going to navigate under the sunlight. And the sunlight is like, this is where the true light is coming from. So it's almost like we we won't need almost like a, a, like a, like a replacement, right? Or like a, a mirror. We won't need, it's like we will have the true teacher right? But that true teacher was being hidden or was being covered, right? By this bigger, more inflated sail. There is this shift that is happening in the way that we navigate, right? Our lives as a collective. Also, there is a new teacher approaching one that is going to show us how to navigate under the sunlight instead of the moonlight. And it's almost like, you know, it's beautiful because what I'm seeing here uh, with the sun is like a sunflower. So, and it's beautiful. Oh my God. It's like taking me back to a memory. Oh, I don't even know how long that's been. But a few years ago, uh, an old uh, ex-friend, ex-boyfriend uh, of my sister, um he wrote a poem for her and for me and it was the lotus flower and the sunflower and the lotus flower was um connected to the moon and it was me and the sunflower was connected to the sun and it was my sister and you know oftentimes when people ask oh what is it like to have a twin sister and you know, are your birth charts the same? And yes, it is the same birth chart. Uh, astrologically uh, speaking, we are the same, right? Our DNA is the same, but we have different paths, different experiences, different jobs, different ways of being in this world, right? So, and you know, it's fascinating because it's like in astrology, when you read a birth chart of twins, especially in my case, that is the same as hers, um, it's like, we're always, um, interchanging. We're always interweaving our way through the sun and the moon, right? It's almost like one is more expressive than the other. One is more introspective than the other. So it switches and it feels like right now, and, you know, just as an example, it's like maybe in your life, so far you have been navigating in this darkness you know receiving the light from the sun but always bouncing off of another surface right so it was always almost like this shield is how i'm seeing this right now it's like instead of a sail that is meant to flow with the wind it became like a shield that was protecting something behind right but that's the thing is like this true teacher is meant to come from the shadows to daylight, to the sunlight and bloom, right? Like the sunflower. So 
perhaps this new path, it's almost like, and that's the reason why this expectation, like, you know, there is this big message of like, allow the expectations to be put to sleep. It's like they are no longer needed because you don't have to expect or you don't have to, you know, convince yourself that you're able to see the lotus flower blooming from the mud. It's like you're going to be able to see the sunflower, right? It's like underneath the sunlight. It's like the sunflower is going to bloom and it's not necessarily going to come from the mud, right? So maybe that's part of this new lesson, these new teachings that this new teacher is going to bring. But the other thing that I was seeing with this uh, hair fin, because of this card that is coming next, which is the Seven of Pentacles, this Seven of Pentacles was uh, showing me a bunch of pearls from inside of a shell. So the same way that I was um, seeing this as like as a hard shield, it's like it's a hard shell as, as the same at the same time. It's like whatever was behind or whatever is behind that was not seen because of the blindfold, because of the sail, because it was needed in a certain moment in time, right? Because that was how we were going to navigate through the darkness. But since now it's like the sun is coming up. And that those expectations are being put to sleep. It's almost like there is some sort of reward, but it's like it's multiple. So it's like the opening of this shell, right? The letting go of this old sail that is giving way to a new way of navigating this world. It's actually, it's kind of like this, um, it's like this, awe striking moment of realizing that there's a lot of value in everything that you've been through in the darkness maybe trusting your intuition trusting your instincts because that served a purpose right the purpose was there right so but it's just that it's being redesigned it's like it's being remade recreated laid out in a new way and that's what's changing right the shift from the moon to the sun so the lotus from um from the lotus to um the sunflower and because this is opening up it's like there is this moment of acknowledgement it's like if it wasn't for all of that hardship perhaps right all of the challenges all of the burdens all of that path, these pearls would never be here. These pearls would never be seen. They would remain unseen. So I do feel like there is almost like this very tangible reward. And it's beautiful because the thing about the Seven of Pentacles, it's, it's different from the Ace of Pentacles, right? It's like it comes as a group. It comes as like many pearls, many things, many prizes, many rewards. It's like it's a collective of blessings. So here, ending with the justice, what do you do with these pearls? You weigh them, you balance them out. Again, going back to the expectations, it's like, don't allow the good expectations to settle in. Don't allow the bad expectations to settle in. Both of them are, it's like they're now in a cycle that has ended, right? So there is a new leader, a new sailor, a new, um, a new teacher that is meant to come to light from the shadows, right? Of the one that was too big. It's like it, the shield was growing bigger than the shell, right? So it's like the inner structure was not going to be able to uphold that. So it's just, it's just going away the same way that the blindfold is going away. So no expectations from either side, right? It's almost like finding this middle ground. Maybe that's this new path 
right? This new path that is more fair, that is more just, that is more balanced, that is more harmonious. But one also that it's like bring this sense of, okay, I have my rewards. I'm not going to put them all in one basket or all in one side of the scale. I'm like, I'm going to balance this out. You see what I mean? So it's almost like in choosing to go in this new path that is being redesigned, it's like there is the acknowledgement of the two sides, maybe like the acknowledgement that we're still here in this path, right? This um, 3D plane that is very um, dual, right? It's, it's like it's made of dualities. So it's like acknowledge the moon and the sun, but know that a time of, this might sound cheesy, but it's what I'm hearing. It's like a time of enlightenment. Right? I know that this is a word that's um, maybe lost its, its uh, true meaning, but maybe this, this is it, right? This new sunflower that is blooming, the new rewards. It's like looking at the things that were already there, but from a new perspective, one that is balanced. So... I hope this made sense. I hope this was useful. Remember that this reading was intended to pierce through the block, right? That sometimes we create for ourselves, you know, with um, self-sabotaging thoughts or negative thoughts or, you know, all of these things that we have in our minds. So put that to sleep. Know that there is a new teacher that is coming through and you know, it might very well be yourself, right? Your own essence, your own light. So trust that things are are going to be more balanced now. It's like you're you're the one weighing these new pearls, weighing these two sides. It's like balancing out these two sides, not allowing it to go, you know, to one side or the other. So yeah, I'm going to pull more cards to see where this wants to go. And also I'm going to pull from the astrological rooms in the extended reading. So if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see you. You can find the link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. Bye.